If you're on the market trying to find a cheap mini PC that can play games, it's not difficult to feel overwhelmed. In today's video, we'll clear everything up. We'll be showing the cheapest deals on Amazon, things to look out for, and most importantly, some head-to-head -head gaming benchmarks. So please, hang on for the ride, grab a cup of tea, and welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. In these past few years, we've reviewed plenty of mini PCs, and found that if you want a game without the use of external graphics board, it's better to ditch Intel and go Ryzen. We've selected four GPUs that are common on a wide range of mini PCs currently on the market. We'll select one that's in our possession, had no issues with thermal throttling, and also select the faster unit. Just remember that all computers in the same GPU category should have a quite similar performance when it comes to games. For the Vega 8, we'll use the Geekom A5. This has a 5800H, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, and it's currently at $399 on Amazon. The prices will fluctuate with sales, but you can also find it for cheaper on their website. But if you have a faulty unit, Amazon's return policy is second to none. For the 660M, we'll be using the GMK Tech M6. It houses a Ryzen 6600H, which is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU on the newer Zen 3 Plus architecture. The cheapest model is going for $299 on both Amazon and the GMK Tech website, but if you want double RAM and storage, it's at $340. For the 680M, we were split between the B-Link Sur 6 and the GMK Tech K5, and after running the Grid Order Sport Benchmark on Ultra settings, the K5 came on top. This one here uses an 8-core, 16-thread 7735HS, and it's on Amazon at $507 if you use that coupon. If you can't wait for an Amazon sale, $450 on the website. For the 780M, we were split between the Rear 10 Alloy 9 and the GMK Tech K8. And while the Alloy 9 had less noise, the GMK Tech K8 had a slightly better score. It uses the 8845HS, another 8-core, 16-thread CPU. With the coupon, it's at $630, and the 1TB version is $600 on the website. Here's a quick summary for each chipset we'll be testing, but what's surprising is there's not much of a difference when it comes to pricing. If you want to help out the channel, we've left affiliate links down below, and here's what we found. 5800H from B-Link's sister company. The Tricky S6 with a 6600H. Camrui 8008 Pro with a 7735HS. And if you fancy some Arabian Nights, here's a Paladin H4. If you're looking to buy a mini PC, should you only look at the GPU? Well, the answer is no. A computer's performance is a sum of all the parts, and manufacturers also need to cost cut in order to remain competitive. Here's what to look out for. Low quality storage can lead to less reliability and data corruption. And unfortunately, the only way to find out what's inside is by checking reviews. And that also applies to memory. If you have low quality memory, you may have reliability issues, or the computer simply cannot turn on. And something we need to mention is cooling. While a heatsink like this can help, it won't do anything unless air can flow out the case. A computer that thermal throttles will give absolutely garbage performance. A full metal case built well can be the exception. They usually have a bit more weight to it, but every mini PC in a metal case with SYN usually suffers when it comes to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signal strength. We check for these in our mini PC reviews, and if you want to see more, why not subscribe? Subscribble. Oh, subscribble. Pew. For the tests, we've updated each mini PC to the latest version of Windows 11 Pro, including the drivers. In the BIOS, we've set each to performance mode, and let's get into the meat and potatoes. While Geekbench shows a clear winner when it comes to CPU strength, things get a bit muddy when comparing the 5800H with the 6600H, especially considering that the latter has two extra cores. Next up is Firestrike, a gaming benchmark specifically made for DirectX 11. And if we check out the white bar, we can see the increases that we have with each GPU. Time Spy, DirectX 12. Here we can clearly visualize the differences that the extra two cores make on the CPU, but the question is, how much of this matters in game? Citibench R23. Clearly showing which chipset is faster when it comes to CPU workloads, and this will help in applications such as video editing and things like that. Let's move on to benchmarks that showcase games. If you want to skip these, we have timestamps at the bottom, and here's Final Fantasy XV, and we're on 720p light settings.
GTA 5, Fighter and Car Chase. We're at 1080p normal settings, with all the sliders set to max. Civilization 6, Gathering Storm. We're at 1080p medium settings, and we'll first start off with the GPU testing. And now for the CPU test. Rise of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, low settings. Moving on to the more difficult games to run, Guardians of the Galaxy in 720p low. Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p, low settings, with upscaling set to off.
Next up is Grid Auto Sport at 1080p medium settings. F123, 1080p, ultra low. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, and all upscaling technology like FSR and XS are turned off so we can see the real power of each unit. We'll now demonstrate performance by showing some real game footage. Here's Dota 2, and it's pretty clear that this game in particular works better with more CPU cores. And in Fortnite, we see a similar trend. Admittedly, we can get more FPS by lowering graphic settings, but we see both the 5800H and the 6600H fight for third place, while the other two processors have their positions set in stone. And it's Counter Strike 2, 1080p, low settings. We've also turned off FSR. So now you see the differences in gaming, but how about for applications use? Well, to be fair, in usual Windows tasks, any of the computers we presented would work great. But as DDR5, NVMe 4 and USB 4 is introduced from the 6000 series, choosing one of these may be a better fit. To add, video codecs like AV1 have been added too. So for heavy video editing and high tier emulation, Ryzen chips that use the 780M are the current best choice. And provided we have the same memory configuration and decent cooling, the performance for all of these are in the same ballpark. 
It's actually very easy to recommend this one, the K6. It has a 7840HS, which is clocked slightly lower, but there's much less chance of getting any thermal issues. So it should be cooler, slightly quieter, and my daughter's been playing games on this for the past three months. When it comes to gaming, the 780M is said to be similar in power to the G4 1660 Ti. There are plenty of game tests on YouTube if you want to check out the performance, but if you want to go beyond that, it may be good to wait until the next generation of mini PCs are released, or get one with an Oculink, allowing you to use external GPU. But a mini PC with an external GPU just looks stupid. If you fancy helping out the channel, we have affiliate links down below, but simply clicking that like would be fantastic. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and we also have these other videos. Imagine if you walked into a bar and there was a long line of people waiting to take a swing at you.